this is William from Perma Pastures Farm, and today we're going to be letting the sheep out on pasture. But before we do that, we have to build this dog kennel for the sheep to have some sort of uh, security at night, some place where they can es escape the elements and all that stuff. In Texas, we use the lamb tractor, but we didn't bring that with us because it's just so big. So we went to Home Depot, got a dog kennel for them, and it's just going to act as like a home base for the sheep. We'll extend the fence you know, around the, the kennel so they can graze that area. And then at night, they'll just go into the kennel. Or if it's really crappy outside, if it's storming or snowing or something like that, they can just go inside the kennel. So we're going to go ahead and get this assembled, put it out on the pasture, and then get the sheep out there. Okay, today is the big day. It's a really big day because we're getting those chickens, well, not the chickens, we're getting the sheep out of their stall and onto pasture and uh, green pasture, no less, in the middle of winter. And there's a reason for that. We'll probably cover that in other videos, but this is a south facing slope. One of the many things this property does have going for it. And we can use that because this grass stays greener even through some of the uh, hard freezes we've had so far. So, the beautiful part is the chick, the sheep are going to come out of the barn out here on pasture. Now let's talk about what happened. Uh, William and Michelle have basically gone out. We went out and bought a dog crate or a dog kennel. Uh, I think this one's seven by 10, inexpensive, didn't have to be much. Now, if you've seen in previous videos, we've had a sheep tractor and that was a 16 by 16. And it was beautiful because we could manage our grazing easily because we could have them within that 16 by 16 container. They could run around, they could do all the things that sheep do and then move them as our grazer's eye recognized that they needed to be moved. Well, we've also done it a different way where we've used a dog kennel as their central point. And then from there, we allow them to go out and graze every day. They go back in at night where they're, shaped, where they're safe from any coyotes or anything else that may be out there wanting to get them. Now they'll, they'll work that area until we recognize it being you know, where it's grazed enough. And we'll talk in the future about how we go about doing that. The dog kennel, which is being used to house sheep right now, it's going to move a little bit where the opening handles another quadrant. Then they work that quadrant until our grazer's eyes say it's okay. Then they work another one. So essentially their home, the place, their quarters where they sleep at night will largely stay in the same area. It'll just move a couple of feet. And because this thing's so light, it's not really that hard to move. So it'll move to a different quadrant. So they'll stay there essentially about a month. Then we'll move them to a whole different quadrant. So it's not a big deal because this thing doesn't have wheels on it like we did with our sheep tractor. It's not a big deal that it stays in one place. It's not static by any means. It's roughly staying in the, in the same place. We may move it a little bit to work each quadrant. Then we'll move it entirely to another place and we'll do the same thing all over again. This is a really neat system. It's an easy way to do this if you don't have the benefits of uh, let's say a livestock guardian dog. It's a cool way to do this. If um, you're working on small acreage, which we're doing high density grazing on small acreage. So we're showing you how we do it. And hopefully that translates to how you can potentially do it. You may have to change up a few things, um, but it's really not difficult folks. This isn't hard stuff. So after the sheep go through, guess who follows behind them? The chickens, they cleanse the area, we move on. So we're gonna get to it. Stay tuned.
Okay, well, it's, you know, moving them over here, if you can see in the video, just like when your kids are little and they fight you trying to get in, you say, hey, you need to go take a bath. You need to go take a bath. I don't want to take a bath. I don't want to take a bath. And then finally, when you get them in here, you can't get them out. And that's exactly what's going on right now. If you look around you, they fight you tooth and nail every step of the way. But the most satisfying thing of doing this work is the behavior that you see in any single animal that you have on pasture. What happens? You put them in here and, and you look around and with sheep, the, the funny thing is they'll go over here, they'll eat something and then they'll go 10 feet away. Oh, I like that and they'll eat that. And then it'll go on and on and on and on. This is exactly how it's supposed to be, not in a static environment where you, you just leave them in there and they have this miserable existence of standing in their own muck and and um you know not seeing things that are green well we got a south facing slope and we got a lot of green stuff and they are absolutely loving it are you happy now yeah. look we've raised sheep before for uh meat are these going in the freezer no, not. <laughs> well no these guys are never going to see the inside of a freezer but they do fantastic work for us they keep things mowed down they we in fact we We've been through the whole goat thing before. These guys, from our observation, they, they eat just about everything a goat will eat. We don't have any of the management issues that you have with goats. So these hair sheep, these Katahdins and Dorpers and St. Croix, I mean, they've been fantastic for us. Extremely parasite resistant. And they're even more so when you do what she does. And maybe in the future, we can actually get her to talk about what it is she does to make these guys so parasite resistant. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what happened today? Why is it so important that they're over here? their parasite load in the barn is much higher. They need to be out on pasture so that they're constantly eating new areas and letting the old areas rest and let nature cleanse the, the pasture from parasites. Right, and it does that through sunlight and it does it through the chickens also help. They help break up the parasite cycle. Um, but in addition to all that, I mean, so from this quadrant we're in, and I, as I explained a moment ago, you can see that little, um, well, she's got a little pimped out dog kennel that, you know, they'd be just fine with the top, but she wasn't going to have just that. So we got to have them shielded from the wind as well. So it's, it, it's not fully set up and ready to rock and roll, but it will be. Um, so from where we're standing, this lamb tractor is, will be just, I mean, maybe 10 feet on the other side of the fence that way. And then we'll break this fence down, which is simple to do, put it in another quadrant. Or we can do it as we've done before, where we say, okay, they're playing out an area. They've eaten a third, they stopped a third, we're gonna leave a third. And even with the fence reel still standing here, we could go to the next quadrant, just slinky the fence around until we get into a new area. And believe me, once they see new pasture, they, as you can see right now, they need no attention. I could leave this gate we could walk out of this gate and they're not going to follow us. They are very, very happy right now. Very happy sheep. You're very happy. Are you happy now? Yes. That's good. All the way around. So, um, yeah, happy sheep, happy people. And um, this is a permaculture pimp daddy along with a homestead hottie. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>